So first we have the specimens in formalin and we take them from fresh samples and now we're going to remove each sample at a time and work on it, uh, a process called crossing. it inside the fuel hood on our processing chamber. Then we remove the part that we, do. we want to put section on our processing on and we close the casket. A very important step is to label your section or your specimen. And for that you need a pencil to be able to write on it and not to use it. The next step is to do processing for the sample and for that you can either uh, do it manually for uh, in serial graded ethanol or you can use a tissue processor, an automated tissue processor where the sample will be automatically transferred between jars filled with a serial graded ethanol. The final step in this process is to reach the clearing step which means that you remove the ethanol and put xylene inside the sample. This is the automated tissue processor. Now we will put the sample in the automated tissue processor and the automated tissue processor can be programmed to different programs depending on your sample and your needs. The most commonly used program is that we start with another step of fixation to make sure that your sample is completely fixed. The first two jars, as we will show you now, contain formalin as well, 10% form paraformaldehyde. And after that, we start the serial uh, graded ethanol dehydration. Now we will remove the basket and put our cassette in, the cassette that has the specimen. Put back your basket and the program will start moving the basket between different jars containing different materials. First the paraformaldehyde, then the graded ethanol to reach up to 100% ethanol. This is the dehydration step and this is done overnight and after the 100% ethanol you will reach the xylene which is the clearing agent and we use xylene because it's completely miscible with the wax that we will infiltrate into our sample. So the final step, the final jar for sample processing would be immersion of the sample inside the wax. This is molten wax. So now you are seeing the sample going into molten wax and it will be infiltrated with wax. The xylene will be moved out and the, the wax will be inside the sample. After the end of the processing, we will open our automated processing machine and remove our cassette from the molten wax. Now we have infiltrated our sample. The next step would be embedding our sample. 
So for that, we will remove the cassette and put it on the embedding station. The next step is to bring our mold in which we will do the embedding. This is the mold. It's a metal mold. Now we will put the mold on the embedding station. Notice that it's completely hot, so the wax will not harden. We poured wax into our mold. This is our sample that we removed from the tissue processor, completely infiltrated with wax. We put the sample inside the mold, so now we did the embedding step. And note that we will keep the base of the cassette. We don't need the cover anymore. And the base, we have the name of our specimen on, which is very important. And this is what we will use for further steps. We push it down on the sample, and then we remove the mold together with the base of the cassette and put it on a very cold area, very cold surface to harden the wax. Now we will remove the mold with the sample and the base of the cassette and put it on what we call the ice station, which is a very cold surface in order for the wax to harden. This is the wax that we use for embedding as well as infiltration. For the embedding station, we have a reservoir that's heated from the inside and we put the big chunks of wax, the solid wax in it, and when heated, they will be molten. After the wax has completely solidified, we will remove our cassette from the mold and put the cassette with the specimen back on our ice station so it completely solidifies before we start our sectioning step. We will place our block so we can start the sectioning or the cutting. This is the trimming part, so we remove as much as possible from the wax without reaching the sample. This is what we call the ribbon. And you will take the ribbon to a water bath to be able to put it on the slide. So now we take the ribbon and place it in the first water bath, which is at room temperature. Using a slide, we do what we call fishing, which means placing your sample or your section on top of the slide. The next step is to put it in another water bath at 50 degrees Celsius, which is 10 degrees below the melting temperature of wax. This step is important to make sure that you don't have a wrinkled section. And this is how your slide will look with the samples on it. Now that our samples are on, or our sections are on the slides, we will start the staining step. In this staining, we will show you the most commonly used stain, which is hematoxylin and eosin or H and E. We put our slides in this carrier and we start a series of graded ethanol. This time, we are removing the hydrophobic material, the wax, so we start with the xylene and then we go to 100% ethanol then we decrease the ethanol content until we reach around 70% of ethanol and the rest is water. The next step, now we will do, uh, we will put the sample under running tap water to wash it completely with water because the SMP stain mixes with water does not mix with hydrophobic material.
So basically what we're doing is rehydration of our sample instead of the dehydration that we started with during the testing. We'll start the staining process. First, we will put the sample in hematoxylin, which you know is blue, and we will leave it for five minutes inside the hematoxylin. The hematoxylin is a nuclear stain, remember, because it adheres to negatively charged molecules. Then we will remove it from the hematoxylin after five minutes. Wash it on the running tap water. Remember, the AUSIN will stain your cytoplasm because it stains positively charged molecules. The final step also will be washing under running tap water. Now we will uh, dehydrate our samples again in serial ethanol starting with a 70% ethanol, next more ethanol, less water, and the final step would be the xylene. Now our samples are cleared again, filled with xylene. Now we will take a cover slip to do the mounting step using DPX mounting media. We will take a single drop of mounting media, place it on the cover slip. Remove our slide from xylene and immediately place it opposite on the cover slip on the mounting media to preserve it.